Yo, welcome back to another Pokemon Scarlet Violet VGC video. I'm your host, Jose Rocks, and today we have another episode of Journey Through VGC. The current format we're in is Regulation E. Y'all ready? Let's get into it. Alright guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be playing some more games with this Monkey Dory team that I built. So there is a runner code up at the top right as well as a Poke Paste down in the description below. And if you want to um, see more battles with this team or see me use Monkey Dory a little bit more, uh, it did come out a lot more in the first video, then just uh, watch the video that I posted just before this one, which is uh, the prequel to this video. This video is actually like a sequel or follow up to that one. So if you want to see more Monkey Dory, just give that video a shot. And we're going to be grinding for the high ladder and see how high we can get with this team. But that's going to be it. Let's get into these battles. Alrighty, so for our first match, we have Tornadus, Godango, and Reggie Drago. And he has Bramble Gas. Instead of like a, a Trick Room user, like Indeedee or Furgraph. And then he has Grass Ogre Pond over like a Rillaboom. So, so we've seen this type of team before. So I can't easily click Heat Wave, right? Even if he goes for Steel Tear, like T looks so good here. We know he's gonna lead Tornadus. He has a Tailwind though. Boom is just not good here though. It's only good into the Urshifu. Everything else just swallows it. I'm just gonna go with these two. I think I bring Flutter in the back. And lead Dondozo. I can threaten with a Dark Pulse from Chiyu. I don't necessarily have to click Heat Wave. Chiyu looks strong here though. It's really good into a lot of his team. Um, even the Brombo gas, like it's immune to heat wave, but it just faints to um, Dark Pulse. The only issue is that he has Urshifu. If it's Urshifu Dark, that's also a problem. Right, this is not a lead I expected. Ivy Keldra plus Draco Meteor kind of just covers for like my Terra. I'm gonna Dark Post this and protect. Alright, so it looks like he's not protecting. Just follow me. I need to get in Tessa Gear here. Save to you. I can't believe he just went for follow me though. We can't safely tear it till we deal some damage to the Reggie Drago. Alright, so he's just going for follow me. I mean, I, I, I don't mind that. Oh, he survives that. He still gets Dragon Energy off. That's a lot of damage. I think he's gonna attack with Overprime here, so I'm gonna. 
I want to get around the cudgel. But if he doesn't, if he just goes for another follow me, then I'm in trouble. But he, like he's seeing I'm going for spread type attacks. So he shouldn't go for that. He still would. He just clicking follow me. Oh, this is really bad. I didn't even have to do that. I just basically gave a KO to him. Oh, yeah, this game's over. I mean, he's always still terror on his dragon. Right? I don't know. I don't see a world where you're not. Does he still outspeed me? Flutter main now speeds though, so I mean, I feel like we can still win this game. I mean, if you switch, I'm just gonna play Dark Pulse here. Should have double protected. Stall out of turn and tell one. I wonder if his last is Gordango. We can't protect her Urshifu. So I mean, you could just go out to flutter, right? Quick heat wave though. Imagine if we get heat wave off here. That'd be crazy. I went for the double. What? Wait. Wait. Do I just get heat wave off here? That should be a double KO. I connect both. What? <laughs> I don't know how I just won this game. 
the still like he literally is supposed to tear in the water there, right? And I think I just lose because you're supposed to click dark post, but he actually tear it into the one terror that allow us to win that game. Wow, that was crazy. Props to my opponent. I mean, he played it well. Uh, continue to click follow me with uh, Ogre Pond and not straying away from it, even though I showed that I was going for um, a, a double targeting attack. It took a lot of conviction for him to do that. So props to my opponent for that. But we were still able to, to dub that game out. Like, if you just don't tear it, I think you pretty much win, right? Because the next turn, you can just Aqua Jet to you. So, or if you just attack to you there, I also lose, right? Because Fluttermane can't hit the uh, the Urshifu once the Steel Terror. So that was a crazy game. I'm very surprised I was able to win that. But I end up clicking Heat Wave. And the idea was behind it was to potentially get a burn on Urshifu maybe. And to KO the, uh, the Tornadus, right? And I wanted to be able to deal damage to both. And Snarl doesn't uh, do as much damage to Urshifu as the Heat Wave would. And Snarl also might not have picked up the KO on Tornadus, depending on how much bulk it has. So that's the idea of why I went for Heatwave. But it ended up working out. But enough of that. Let's get to the next one. Ooh, okay. So for our next match, we have a very interesting team here. There's, there's also a Baskalesian with no rain. There's the Sandy Shocks and the Spatra um, combo. And then he has Sylveon, Serena, and Arcanine. So I don't want to underestimate this team. The Sandy Shocks and the Spatula Core can be pretty annoying. Can Monkey Dory shine here? This bachelor core is just, it's just kind of annoying, right? I'm just gonna go for gravity and try to put me to sleep. I don't think I want to bring Flutter Man. I'm gonna go Rillaboom, Chiyu, Dondozo, and Tessigiri. I mean, Monkey Dory is good into Serena and. Sylveon. That's really it. This battery. Okay, he didn't even eat it. So my question is, how does this core of these two beat Dondozo? They're gonna go for Snarl here. There's a lot more to Arcanine than I thought it would. I may could pick up a double KO here if I just go for like Dark Pulse plus Wood Hammer. I don't know if that'll KO uh, Sylveon, but at minus one. But Sylveon's physical defense is not that good. Okay. That was a good extreme speed. So if I don't KO here, I'm going to lose both. But I think Dondozo can clear this team. Yeah, we do KO. Oh, uh, we got a crit. Not ideal. I 
I never like critting because I feel like I can win without the crit. Alright, so we're gonna bring out Dundos over here. I wonder if he's gonna bring out the spatula strategy. I'm gonna retreat Rillaboom here. Serve for later. I think I'm gonna try to get Sandy shots off the field first. So this confirms that he may have a spatula in the back, right? And I just don't want those two next to each other. Actually, I'm actually okay with this. Yeah, so he goes after the Rillaboom. Thunderbolt, okay. I'm actually okay with this because now I can double KO with Earthquake. Well, it is reduced damage with the, um, yeah, Earthquake is still going to KO, though. And then it's just a 1v1 against the Spatula. Actually, he may protect Sandy Shocks here, so I'm gonna go for just boot up into this. Uh, that's decent chip. So it's gonna try to put me to sleep with a spatula, but if I can, oh, that just chaos. I was gonna say if I can like kind of staggered knocking out Arcanine and knock him out at the same time. A Spatra can't like win by itself. I need to stall out the, uh, the terrain so I can reset it so I can Grassy Glide it. I think I just went for Earthquake last turn. Perfect. So we're going to protect here too. Alright, so we want to try to stall out gravity. This strategy is so egregious to me. This time, burn a turn to sleep immediately. So I can wake up next turn. But 
but I got a way out um, as long as he doesn't put Tasagiri to sleep. Even if he kills on those, I can fake out. Oh yeah, this is KO right here. Oh, the clear amulet made it so he doesn't drop my special attack. Okay. I needed to wake up that last turn. Alright, so is Espatra... Is Espatra, um, Covert Cloak? Some muddy water here. Fake out spatula. Oh, at least it's not covert cloak. Okay. All right, we hit muddy water. Another one. I definitely KO. Now Sandy Shock just protected. So we're gonna go for a Draco Meteor here and Grassy Glide send these shocks. That's the KO. This should win us the game. He went for the double, which is correct. And it's probably like a hypnosis here. Oh, this is Lumina Crash. All right, that doesn't even KO. Nice, it has to give finishes it off. Uh, so we beat the Espatra strategy. <laughs> the strategy is it's, it's egregious, man. Like when you just relying on hypnosis to hypnosis sleep uh, turns to win you the game, like you're gonna win, you're gonna lose like 60, 70% of your games, right? Because majority is in the favor of the opponent waking up from those hypnosis, and you're so fast that they burn a turn of sleep immediately, right? So you're gonna lose majority of those games because they're just gonna wake up, get the first, the second turn, wake up, and then just knock out a spatula. And like you're committing so much to use like suboptimal um, Pokemon, right? So, but that's gonna be it for that battle. Let's get into the next one. All right, so we have the Dondozo Mirror. How good is Monkey Dory here? This Pokemon is so hard to bring. I really don't want to bring my Dumbbells on here. Yeah, I'm gonna go with uh, Monkey in the back because if I drop the special defense of things, Monkey Door can sweep.
I wonder if he's Choice Scarf. I'm gonna go for this play because I feel like it makes sense. And we always know he's gonna tear it there. What is Pelipper going for here? I actually like my opponent's team a lot. Oh, he's going for a straight Aqua Jet. So much to Pelipper. What? Oh, that was a crit. I was gonna say. Alright, does this pick up the knockout on Urshifu? Yes, it does. Okay. So we, we got that call right. Had he not went for Aqua Jet, he would have been in a really bad spot. He goes for Tail, man. Alright, so did he bring Don Dozo or is it Godango in the back? I can fake tier as you, Ghost Terra, Dark Pulse. Or just Icy Wind. Or even Protect. Uh, I'm just gonna go for the Dark Pulse. I don't think I need to use my Terra. I may still have speed. 90s minus one. No, I don't. Okay. I actually think Fire Terror Rillaboom looks really good here. But he has Godango in the back, right? I don't think doesn't win KOs Pelican. I wanted to go for, uh, oh my, anything, that's such a good play. Yeah, I just blew my Terra here, because the ground Terra could have been good on Monkey Dory after Tail one's over. But if I chip everything down, the Monkey Dory can still win. That's no damage. I need to get everything in range though. So I'm gonna protect here. High horsepower go dingo. Yeah, I really didn't want to burn my Terra, but I didn't I really didn't want to take a um a hurricane. Oh great switch by my opponent. <laughs> Great switch by my opponent.
I think Rillaboom can win this by itself. I just need to eliminate Pelican. So Monkey Dory, what can you do in the end game? So I really just need my Rillaboom to be fast, right? So what I can do for is go for a trick onto my Rillaboom. Oh no, I need these help us. Dingo might protect you. I didn't protect. Okay. And the reason I need the assault vest. Oh, that's just a one hit KO. The assault vest helps me survive the Godingo, right? At least we're faster than Berserker. Perfect. So Godingo's getting weaker and weaker, but this is single target now. So this is very close. Is he choice specs? Yeah, I think if he's choice specs, he just loses. Nice. Does Wood Hammer KO from there? I don't know. I'm just gonna go how power. 5% chance to win. He has to crit. And we hit. Nice. Let's go. The fire terror end up helping us win this game. <laughs> Monkey Door was so bad here. It literally offered me nothing but a, a... It gave me a psychic that probably didn't really matter to Berserker and then just got knocked out. <laughs> well, we tried to use it. As, uh, both both myself and my opponent, we both forfeit using Dondozo for this match and went with the other pieces. And we were able to pull out the win. Alright, so for our next match, we have... He's also using Monkey Dory. Hmm. So let's see how he uses how he uses his if he's gonna use it. Cause Monkey Dory, like maybe I don't know if I'm using it right. Maybe I should have the Focus Sash Fake Out set. But I feel like that set is kind of like common and obvious, right? And everybody's expecting it. Um. So if I tear in the dragon. He has nothing to really hit me besides potentially Terra Fairy Heatran and a Breaking Swipe from Roaring Moon. Does my monkey do work here? My monkey does work if he leads like Heatran. I kind of don't want to just burn my Terra, though, to be honest. I'm going to leave my Monkey Dory, and I want to see how he leads, how he does with his. And the reason, because uh, Dragon Terra Dondozo looks really good in his team, and the idea behind Monkey Dory is to tear it for the Ground Terra to get rid of Heatran. 
But if I do that, then I I won't get to terror. Be Dondoza. Yeah. I mean, Monkey Dory, I could have led it here, but all it would have done is like a kind of obvious. All right, so we're faster than his run move. So it would have just done like an obvious sludge bomb into Ogre Pond, and it could just protect. And he goes for knockoff with Roaring Moon. Alright, I mean... Stop him from going for Icy Wind Heat Wave. Because he may protect Roaring Moon, right? Or he tear it. If he tear it, then he lose both. And I might, you know, activate Defiant. Uh, if he tear his Ogre Pond here, though, that'd be really bad. Uh oh. I think that's Roaring Moon, though. Okay. So he tear us to get around the Dazzling Gleam, but. Now we just hit you with both super effective Icy Wind and then Heat Wave, which is neutral now. Oh, he doesn't protect Ogre Prime, so this should be a double KO. Alright, well, Roaring Moon is faster. Is he gonna go for... Oh, he's not. Okay. He might still get Tailwind up, though. So he does get Tailwind up, but we take out Ogre Pond, which is clutch. So he's down one and a half months. Alright, there's the monkey. Can I afford to play? Would you really have Dragon Dance and Tailwind though? I don't think you would. So I can protect here. I don't see any downside to it. Just to get around a potential fake out. Acrobatics. Side shot. Oh, did he read me going for a Terra? Did you really side shot into a dark type? I actually think I could conserve my chi in front of me. Because I don't know if the Roaring Moon outspeeds and why just like let him KO my Flutter Man when I don't have to. Because he may be minus one. So put him back to neutral because he got rid of the boost energy, but then he hit Tailwind. And that might be enough to help him out speed, so I'd rather not just give up Fluttermane for no reason. Well, we can just make him scuff his acrobatics, right? And just eat up the potential Psy Shocker Sludge Bomb on Darnosa. Well, he protected. Even better. So he just whiff acrobatics? Yep, perfect. Last turn to Tailwind. I think we can knock out Roaring Moon here. I think I just want to go for Earthquake. I mean, uh, Rock Slide. Break the Sash on the Monkey. Okay, he switches Monkey. But it's not really offering him anything. Is it Dark? Ooh. That's freaking scary. Now, 
Now that's terrifying because it's darker, Shifu. Uh, it's gonna get another tail one up. Oh, and I was faster than Roaring Moon. I should've just attacked it. Yeah. My phone is finding a way out. Is it worth tearing here? I think it's safer for Fluttering. I think I just try to knock out Roaring Moon here. Oh, his his Urshifu is weak. Oh, he's that means he's jolly. Dory has fake out here. Even if he does, I mean, it's fine. Yeah, he does. Okay. I think the monkey's faster, so what I'm gonna do is protect here. So the monkey doesn't attack me, and then let Urshifu knock me out, and then I get the free switch in. It's Asagiri. I should've just knocked out Roaring Moon. I forgot that it was at minus one speed. Like him not having tail went up just instantly like ends the game. So that's my bad. Perfect. The only way he gets out is if he targets the Tessigiri slot. Okay. And Tailwind's over. I see wind here. Slow things down. Terror. Dazzle. Urshifu's gonna protect here, and he might go for Slush Bomb. Which is kind of obvious, but... I feel like T.U. can end this game with Heat Wave. Yeah, so we knew that was happening. I could have protected here, but if I went for that, a slush wave. All right, now I'm in sucker punch range. And I can just kill this with a Draco Meteor. Sucker punch here.
This is a little bit overkill, but I mean, what else was I was gonna go for? But we still connect. <laughs> Just in case if there was any doubt if Draco Meter would have KO'd there. This game should be wrapped up now. I mean, he can click Sludge Wave, but he's, he's in trouble. And last but not least, we knock out the monkey. Nice. And we beat, we win the battle of the monkeys. Well, we didn't bring ours, but we still won. I feel like he probably would have had a lot uh, better chance if he just didn't bring the money. It's funny because like I'm trying to you know build a team around it, but then we end up just not even bring it to the team that's built around it. Cause this Pokemon is so hard to use. That's why you don't really see it on a lot of like that. You see my opponent like he was struggling to use it. Like you got to protect Urshifu just to do Sludge Wave, right? Which is not ideal. And you have Side Shock, what Fake Out? It's not really doing much, and it's just taking up a Focus Sash slot. That's a very valuable item that could be on something better. But that's gonna be it for that one. Let's get into one final game. <laughs> we are top 61, but we didn't even use the monkey. Alright, we have another Among Us to team. So he's definitely gonna bring Among Us. I think Fleming Chi is strong here. Could bring the monkey, but my opponent is top rank 48. Like, how do I bring it here? Like, it can knock out the Arcanine, knock out the Among Us, do a decent damage into the Iron Hands and the Flutterman. But, like, I feel like the Roaring Moon just really does it in. I see no downside to double protecting here to scout out for fake outs and terrors. If he's gonna terror, he's probably tearing the water. So there's a the terror. Mm -hmm. Iron hands are ooh, okay. So you got the switch chin power I can KO with, right? Switching to Arcanine. I 
could go ghost to over here. But I think if I can just KO Chimp out before it can move, I think it's valuable. Yep, okay. If I had Grass Tail on Chi, I could have went for Fake Tears like Grass Tail, Terra Blast, and just remove Iron Hands. The Chen Pao's down. I would love a Wild Charge in the Flutter, man. So we still have our terror though. I wonder if he's gonna send out any priority here. Arcanine is really bad into Dondozo because we have clear amulet. And we can just instantly one-shot it with an Earthquake, so it's really bad into Dundozo. Oh, and he burnt his Terror. Monga should protect him. Why do we want the straight spore? Does he not even have protect on Among Us? Ah, he does. Well played by my opponent. That's a game winning play. Yeah, it still doesn't do anything. Oh, did he target it? What are Did he really switch Among Us here? I can't believe he didn't protect Among Us that first turn. Like, he was just really willing to. But that's a hard read. But at least we KO Among Us here. Potential burn here is also good. Oh, he's Aka Berry. Uh, that's why he was able to go for the spore.
That makes so much sense. I can only hope that this can knock out Among Us. It makes sense now why he went for um the Spore turn one. Because he has Akaberry, he can always survive a heat wave. That's very clever. So Chibi's probably out of commission for the rest of this game. Because I don't I haven't took a turn of sleep on it, and it's just one HP, so. If he doesn't protect the Moongus here, I think we can win. Or if he doesn't switch it either. Alright, so he doesn't switch. Alright, Roaring Moon protects. Perfect. Can we KO here? Nice. Oh, we got a crit. That might have mattered. Amogus is so irritating. <laughs> but it's such a good Pokemon. I feel like it's not like a gimmicky Pokemon. It's it's a consistent, you know, support Pokemon. It's one of the best support Pokemon ever, and I, I do respect it. But now my opponent's in trouble. I'm at plus one, too. One thing he can do is maybe knock off my clear amulet, then go for the breaking swipes if he has it. But he may not even be that set. Alright, is he able to punish me for this protect? Alright, let's fake out. He gets the dragon dance off. But we attack boost don't matter to us. Now oh, I could just knock you out. Yeah, you could protect her, it's fine. I mean what is Iron Hands doing? Drain punch? So that did 33 damage, 34 damage. Let me just target Roaring Moon. So he does knock off our clear amulet, but we KO him in the team. Beautiful. All right, now we're at plus four. We should be doing a lot of damage to our hands. Ooh, critting. Okay. But that's actually pretty scary. Because that went from being a three-hit KO to potentially now a two-hit KO. Oh, he cancels. I don't think the battle's over. Like... Do you not have faith that you can knock out Tatsugiri and heal back? I am at plus four with, with um, order up though, so it just depends. Plus if another dream point doesn't KO me, the game's just over from that point. Man, that was a pretty scary game. I think my opponent played that well. I think that, you know, I made the right play. I don't, I don't know if the crit mattered on the Dondozo. When I tear it, uh, it usually, uh, at plus two, when I hit Among Us with order up, most bulky Among Us, it does about 30, 35%. And that Among Us was at about 60%. So with the Terra boost, I would say you probably double that. So I would say I still get the knockout regardless of the crit, right? But I'm not 100% sure about that count. But that's going to be it for these battles. Let's see how high we were able to get, because that was a pretty ranked, high ranked opponent. Nice, so we hit top 41. So I'm actually going to play a couple games off stream to see how close I get to number one with this team. 
Um, this team is did pretty good. So let's get into a final review with this team. But we were able to hit top 41. We have a pretty good record with it. We were able to win, but like I said, we mostly Monkey Dory won us some of the games that like in the first video. But for the most part, I kind of left it right, and we're still able to do really good with this team. That just shows you like you know how you can team build around something and like make a team carry a certain particular mod because it's kind of like you know that that joke when they say you know you have a group full of kids and one kid uh doesn't do anything but still gets a on the project it's kind of like what monkey monkey dory is doing here but let's get into a final review with this team all right so we're getting into our final review here um as always there's a rental code up at the top right as well as a post page down in the description below and this team is pretty cool this team is actually really strong and I know I was, you know, bashing on the Monkey Dory, but it's because, like, Game Freak didn't really give it a lot of tools for it to be good. I tried to come up with, like, a unique set to make it, you know, kind of fun to use. And we kind of showcase, you know, getting a couple of surprise KOs with it and we were able to utilize it. But it really was a carry on this team. The Flutterman and the Chiyu uh, continue to be absolutely dominant. Very hard combo to deal with when you're using it this way. And it just does a lot of damage to everything. I do like the um, the overheat variant that I used on the Empoleon team of Chiyu, but this one is also still pretty good because this one is pretty good into like the um, the Heatran and the Amaru's teams in order to help Don Dozo play better by dropping their you know their special attacks. Willaboom, this set uh, it won us a game with the Fire Terror. This Willaboom is really consistent. I really do love like Assault Vest Willaboom. I just feel like it's a good like splash mod. That you can put on any team and it's gonna like stick like glue right and it's not a lot of mods that you can say that about like iron hands is also one of those potentially flutter main depending on what type of team you're building but really boom and iron hands really now you can splash them on any like hyper offense team tailwind team balance team and they're just gonna be like glue and make the team work good together so that's kind of the idea behind the really boom you know giving me my firewater grass core with dundozo and it's, it's just a really good mod. The Tassigiri also is pretty good. We did showcase it in a couple of games where it came out and won me the games. Like when Tassigiri is able to come out and like just kind of clean up things that Don Dozo's already chipped down, it's actually a really good mod. I do like the Choice Scar better on it than the Ability Shield. And like the Ability Shield is there, but we didn't run into a single Weezing team. So it's almost like my Tassigiri had no item, right? And I think that the Choice Scar would have been a lot, a, a much better fit for it. In some cases um, also like maybe even just like a bulky berry or like a citrus berry because the Tessigiri some most of the time was like a two-hit KO with some moves and with the citrus berry it kind of makes you like a three-hit KO right and like the ability shield is cool but like if you're not running into wheezing then it's really completely useless and like I said um, the monkey dory it has the choice scarf but maybe you can run another item on and get a choice scarf Tessigiri but that's just some food for thought. But overall, I give this team like an 8 out of 10. Even though we're able to get top of like 40 on a ladder with this team, it's mostly due to the parts that we already know that are good, right? And I think to make it better, I would have to take Monkey Dory off, which I might do to try to push for number one and see if I can get, you know, Flutterman to the number one, see how we do. And I'll, you know, record another video and we'll take it from there. But if you like uh, Monkey Dory, I think this is the best type of team to try it out on. And you can find ways to make it work. It is really strong if you can get an extra Flutter main and hit things with Psychic and Sludge Bomb with the fake tears that you're able to uh, drop their special defense. It's just a lot of things that resist poison and uh, Psychic. It's like very like poor coverage, right? Like it does hit some important mods like Ogre Pond and like Amongus for super effective, but it's so many things that just resist it and are immune to it, right? Or just don't take much damage from it. So that's going to be it for a breakdown with this team. Like I said, if you want to try um, this team out, there's a rental code up at the top right as well as a poker face down in the description below. And let me know with a comment, how, how would you guys run Monkey Dory? Do you think that it's a better way to run it? Do you think that the Focus Sash Fake Out set can be better? Or do you think that this kind of surprise trick set is pretty good? But that's going to be it for these, uh, this breakdown. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. All right, deuces.